I love the Addams Family movies, and that's my riveting lead into the episode. Let's start the feud. Hammer said it best about the Adams crew. They do what they want to do, say what they want to say, live how they want to live, play how they want to play, dance how they want to dance, kick into slap a friend Adams family. What? That's the lyrics? Kick into slap a friend? The fuck does that even mean? Let's start with the lead brothers of both flicks. Gomez Adams, played by the scene stealer Raul Julia, R.I.P., is a joy to watch. He's full of energy and life. Julia plays him with such childlike innocence. Fester, played by the always impressive Christopher Lloyd, is just as excellent. Showcasing a man full of equal parts joy, confusion, and jealousy. These are well-rounded characters from the onset. Angelica Houston is Gomez's bride, Morticia. Her performance is subdued in the best way possible. She's full of great quips and nuance. The cast stays intact between the two movies, with the big difference being the focus on the kids more in values. Christina Ricci was so good in the first film, it's no surprise they gave her her own little story in the sequel. The dark humor is on point with every line she delivers. Her brother Pugsley is a lovable oaf that's a bit more one-dimensional, but just as entertaining. Lurch and the granny round the cast out. I think the biggest separator between the two movies are their villains. The first gives us some pretty generic bad guys, played by Dan Hedaya and Elizabeth Wilson. Joan Cusack's deranged serial killer role as Debbie Jelinski is perhaps one of the most underrated villains on the big screen. Cusack plays the lunatic with such gusto you can't help but smile every time she enters the picture. Side characters are just as fun. I would pay top dollar to see a spin-off comedy road trip flick featuring Thing and It. Amanda Buckman, Gary Granger, and Becky Martin Granger are possibly the best thing about Adam's family values. Baby Adams, aptly named Pubert, has his own little misadventures, which come full circle in the final act. Much like the Gremlins sequel, Adam's family takes the great cast we love from the first, builds upon them, and adds their own. It's an easy win here. Hey! The more I reflect on this, the more obvious it is that values is just the superior picture all around. This is my opinion. You can leave yours in the comments or vote. Well, we'll get to that later. The story of the first is simple and straightforward. We don't have an annoying origin story to introduce our characters. They're established in the real world. They are kooky, they are abnormal, they are vile, and they wouldn't want it any other way. The family is all fine and well except for Gomez who misses his long-lost brother day after day. One faithful night, Fester Adams returns home, being lost for many years in the Bermuda Triangle. The thing is, nobody makes it out of the Bermuda Triangle. Nobody. The women of the family are skeptical, and rightfully so. Fester eventually realizes he is, in fact, an Adams, and joins his rightful place with the family. The story is simple and straightforward, but the look, the comedy, and the tone are all very unique. Extremely dry humor, dark comedy, and wonderful visuals all come together for this very nice package. And if you've ever watched this show before, you know I like a nice package. Hashtag no homo. Values has a few stories going on, but they all revolve around the new nanny, Debbie. She systematically tears the family apart by marrying Fester and running off with him. The characters all go through some fun changes during this period. Morticia's the only one that's comically unfazed by any of this. She keeps the family in check with her cool, calm attitude. I mean, as in check as the Adams can be. Highlights that stand out from these films are the bloody sword fight, the crazy vault, the summer camp hijinks, complete with counselor roasting over fire cool dance numbers, and much more. Back in the day, critics Siskel and Ebert would give their movies two thumbs up if they really liked them. Well, for Adam's Family, I'm gonna give them two snaps. -da -da -da. I've already mentioned the stunningly terrible lyrics of MC Hammer's jam, but at least it has a fresh beat. Nobody says fresh beat. The orchestral score produced by Mark Shaman and conducted by Academy Award nominee Artie Kane is on point. It's hauntingly beautiful. The rest of the films feature mainly R&B and hip-hop songs, which work well with the material, oddly enough. Effects are still top-notch to this day. On occasion, you might see a green screen hiccup here and there. It doesn't look right. Y you move past it. Everything moves quick in this film. There's so much craftsmanship at work here, from the eerie cemetery to the threatening greenhouse. The set designers, costume creators, and effects artists should all be commended for their work. To be fair, they kind of were. The movie took home a lot of awards and nominations for the visual department. I've said what I need to say. Talk how I want to talk. Joke how I want to joke. Kick and to slap a friend. Let's move on to the conclusion. If you haven't seen the Addams Family movies, what are you doing? Watch them. They're still amazing. They're free on Amazon Prime, I believe. Uh, I'm a Prime member, so of course I have all the luxuries and accoutrements that come with the, such a highly esteemed position. 
They're free right now. They might not be tomorrow. I don't, I don't fucking know. I would also argue that Adam's Family Values could be considered a Thanksgiving film. So fire that one up with some planes, trains, and automobiles for the holidays. As always, thanks for watching. Comment below, vote for your winner, subscribe if you like the channel, and remember, this is more than just reviews. This is movie feuds. Hey, idiots, why are you packing up? We still have like three more of these to do. Stop. Hammer time. You can't touch this. You can't touch this. You can't touch this. Oh, 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 o